Here we go. Uh, hi, and thank you for being here. I'm just going to introduce you to what are we doing actually in, in Extremadura regarding free software in general. First of all, um, where is Extremadura located? As you see, it's a, a region which is west to today's to Portugal. It's a very dry area, a very hot area, and only 1% of the area is, is water and rivers. We have um, 1 million inhabitants, from which 80% lives in towns of less than 50,000 people. So it's mostly a rural area. Actually, we have only three cities in, with more than 50,000 uh, inhabitants. So basically, we have a, a big region with no people, and the people who is living there is mostly you know, rural area and stuff like that. So uh, I must say that um, statistically, it's also the, the poorest region in Spain, and it was the fifth poorest region in the Europe of the 15. Right, right now, I don't know exactly. So, um, what, what was the, the situation? And, you know, we have a, a region which is mostly rural uh, with um, very few communications, if not no communications at all. And in 1997, the, the telecommunications and business was going to be freed to any operator. Until then, it was exclusively property of the state, of the Spanish state. And after that time, it was a um, kind of particular moment because um, in one side, internet was growing, the dot-com boom was exploding, and but the other side, and all the new operators um, didn't want to bring um, telephony or internet access to Extremadura because of the, the wide area and the small size of every town. We are talking about towns of 300, 500 people, until 8,000 people, so it wasn't profitable for them to, to bring technology and to bring communications and internet to the region. So this all started um, with a, an European founded project, which is Infodex, and we started to think uh, about this communication problem we are talking. So we decided to bring uh, alive to e Extremadura. E Extremadura basically was uh, a set of projects surrounding all the information society to bring the Extremadura not only communications but to bring good use to, to the infrastructure actually. So the first thing we did was to create a, a regional internet which is a private network and owned by the government which connects more than 1,400 points at two megabits. The speed is mostly limited, but, but the age of the network and but the geography. You know, in the north of the area, it's very too much mountains and we needed to connect uh, all the points uh, by radio. While in the south, we are also using fiber optics. So <clears throat> in the beginning, we, we had this network, which is, which is also connected to the internet. And how, how do we use this infrastructure was the, the first question. Well, we started with a, a pool of projects. Being the first one, the new the NKC, it means New Knowledge Centers, it's something like, uh, you know, it's not like uh, telecentres or cyber cafes. It's more like uh, computer community centers located in small towns it goes from town to town, and its main objective is to, to teach people, to teach normal people, people from 16 to 99 years old, about the use of the new technologies. In a sense, not only, you know, let me give you an example, right? And we, we choose to, to look at communities. One, the, the NKC, NKC is in a town, we try to identify communities, and there are several communities like and housewife communities, 
and all people communities, unemployed communities, and the like. And one of the most difficult communities is the old people community because um, the first thing, thing that they say to you when you try to get them into these technologies is, uh, what do I need this because if I'm going to die soon, right? So that's a question that I actually don't have a right answer right now, but at least we try to make their lives a little better. For instance, they used, they used to play bingo a lot. You know bingo, right? It's universal, I think. Well, so one of the things we made, it's uh, to create a small bingo program, which was kind of crappy, actually. It's like all the, the numbers in red. If you click, it turns green and, and the like. And we told these people, just come to, by to the center. We are going to play bingo this afternoon. They came to the center and they found, they found the computers. Um, one note, and the teacher is not allowed to touch the computer. Only the user can touch it. <laughs> so <clears throat> in the, all, every center have like from seven, from seven to 15 computers, depending on the size of the town. So all the, these men sat, and we started to play bingo, right? It's 12. So in a moment, when one man have uh, the number, there's always one person that actually moves the mouse and click. And perhaps the guy sitting next to him doesn't even know. You know, it's very artificial, the, the mouse thinks. Most of the people doesn't, want, doesn't know how to use it. And for a man who is 75, 80 years old, the, the action of moving a mouse and action, actually clicking to a number is quite a challenge. You know, this is one of the first exercises they, they do. And, and for, for, the, uh, for the purpose of, of winning the bingo, they all end up at least uh, pointing and clicking to, to the thing. And well, and things like that. And you know, the old people is a quite invaluable uh, community for us because they have, uh, for example, old pictures, pictures from, well, from the beginning of the, the last century. There's a lot of documentation of Extremadura itself that it's not in the books, but these people have. So and actually teaching them, for example, to scan a photograph and fill up a form and tell us about and what they used to do, what they used to work, and how were they weddings and the like, it's a way to, well, to document uh, how the history of Extremadura in itself and the like. That's a small project, but it's, 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 it's so, uh, joyful. The second, one, the second one, it's perhaps the most spectacular one because of the numbers. It's the Educational Technological Network. And from a population of one million inhabitants, we have perhaps 150,000 students. This is our high school students. And our objective was to bring uh, one computer every two students in every classroom, in every school. I don't mean, I, I'm, I'm not um, talking about just computer science. I'm talking about regular uh, lessons, regular classrooms in every school. We'll talk about this later. The third project is Vivernet, which is, which is a business incubator for to, to new startups all regarding new technologies and free software in particular. And the fourth one is FEBAL, which is a business fair of companies uh, focusing on, on free software and e-commerce. This pool of projects is what we call e-Extremadura. It's, it's like to bring Extremadura to, from the farmer Extremadura to a new level of, of region. So, <clears throat> The question is, well, we have a network, we have nice projects, but how do we assure the, that these projects are going to work? And the answer was Linux, which comes from Linux from Extremadura, and it's okay. <coughs> which, as a matter of fact, when when the counselor decided which software to use, 
Um, we, we, and we choose a free software as a matter of cost saving, as we are going to see later. And then after that, we found out that uh, there are several things that, that often doesn't get into account when you're making a budget that, are, uh, that can only be made with free software. For example, um, when you have an, edu an educational network, uh, well, you have several teachers from several signatures, and it's quite often that a teacher sees, sees something on the inter internet, some software that he likes to install, and imagine, for example, the situation when we have a, well, and let's suppose that there's no virus and worms, and keeping the, the security side. The teacher who needs to install a simple program to use with their students. If we were using proprietary software, and first of all, the software might not be uh, free or distributable, or might not be even be able to install it and be a network. Right now, and we have a cascade system to administer every every computer on the network from a single point. So that kind of and adaptability can only be found in, in free software. So, New Linux is not uh, just a Debian derivative, it's what we call uh, the whole project as a whole, right? It's the tool that we use to, to bring the project that we used before, um, the new knowledge centers, the network, Feval and Bibernet, to make them alive. So, Linux is based on Debian Search. It's used in the public administration, in schools, and the new knowledge centers, Bibernet, and every project who is co-financed by the Extremadura whole project. Some technical specs, just for the freaky guys over here. Well, they, um, Linux is based on Debian. Well, we all know Debian. A distribution that, thanks to its design, makes it easy to create other distributions that can, that can inherit its advantage and get rid of some of its faults. For example, the difficulty of setup and configuration. And actually, the, the, the fault that he's talking about, it's, and it's mostly the, the most common problem that we, we must face when creating a, a distribution for, for a region. And, Okay, Debian is, is very easy to upgrade, to install software, but for example, um, sometimes when some normal people, housewife, installs or upgrades a program, and some dead conf question or something like that and appears, and it appears in English. So most of the time, people don't press enter and don't choose the same as default. Perhaps they just close the window or reboot the computer broken the whole thing, you know. And most of the work we have to do is to try to, well, to, to, to see that conf to avoid those questions and stuff like that, to, to prevent the user to, to fuck it up, basically. <clears throat> well, the first Linux version was based on Debian Potato, 2. It really be, we really began using it with a Debian Booty version like two years ago, and right now it's based on on search. Actually, it's a it's a search snapshot from from December. So we have a search based system, new We are using the Anaconda as the graphical installer. And we have a, well, that's kind of announced. We, we just uh, signed an agreement with Kyocera Noki to make um, free drivers for printers, scanners. They are all actually, well, of course, they are going to, to Debian too. So what can Linux do? That's the, the main question. Several things. These things, people from people of 75, 80 years old. This is the, the first version of, of Linux they, they are showing us. 
This is the Febal Business Fair, which is a huge fair. What we are looking at there is, and Juega Linux is a, a special version of Linux with several games and stuff for teenagers, because one of the problems we had was that the Linux was being used in the schools what the kids want to play games. So just, we just made some, it's the same, it's a DVD version with 150 plus games and, and stuff. So the Extremaduras Technological Network is one server per high school, one computer every two students in every classroom in every high school, one printer per department, one computer per teacher, any student can log in in any computer. All the network can be controlled remotely. The teacher can control the classroom. We also have one computer every five students in primary school. This, we started doing this uh, last year. So some in the high school and primary school, we are almost 90,000 computers in the same network. Everything can be administered remotely and well, that's it, 90,000 in the same network using free software, excuse me. So it's quite refreshing to work in that kind of network. You know? <laughs> this is a typical classroom. As you see, these are normal, norm, normal tables just with a monitor in the middle. This is a classroom actually in use. This, I, I took that, those photos myself, so perhaps they're not and so professional, but uh, you get the idea much better, right? This is a snapshot of the desktop. This is the 3.0 version based on Booty. And everything using Debian. And the one over there is your boss, actually. That's Ian Murdoch when he visited Extremadura uh, last year. He was kind of shocked too to see so many, so many computers using the thing. Well, we also use Linux in several ways. Um, we have Linux Empresa, which is Debian for small and medium companies. 90% of the companies in Extremadura are, are small, so we have, uh, we have several accounting and programs and point of sale programs and stuff like that. Juega Linux, which is Debian for teenagers and gamers. Linux Edu, which is a special suit for educational purposes. And we also have different localized versions for Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, Italian, Greek, and soon we'll have a traditional Chinese. And most of these uh, localized versions are part of uh, cooperation agreements between Extremadura and different governments. We are also using Linux for the vehicular and technical inspection. That's cool because when you go with your car to, to the annual check, you see the guys using a special version or with free software. So it's like a free software land. It's, it's nice, that's why. <laughs> Cooperation, well, well the Linux is the, the Linux version for, for Andalusia, which is the southernmost region in Spain. Very well known for its beaches and parties. We have eSafer, which is a project, a European project to validate your Linux in different platforms. We have a cooperation protocol with Porto Alegre Brazil. We have also a Linux version for Colombia. That was a nice surprise because um, we almost didn't know about it. Uh, these Colombian people came to Extremadura and the following year they came with the CD and they were using uh, Linux call in several centers like the new knowledge centers. We have well, Juan Linux to India and we have, uh, we, we always have and make cooperation agreements with Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, and Salvador, actually. As you see, we, we usually tend to, to make agreements with South America, you know, it's 
culturally, perhaps is the, the closer most region we have. Oh, this is the, the front page of Linux Co for Colombia. And now, until here, some kind of question. Well, because get the facts by a regional government. <laughs> this is new kind of, of publicity. The, <laughs> well, this is the total investment we made for, for the whole thing. And 61.3 million euros, as you see, 37.2 million euros were spent on computers, 2 million on printers, 11.2 million on the internet and the network, and 9 million in the special furniture to hold the computers. As you see, there's no software cost in, in that budget. Actually, the, the preliminary calculation about um, how much will it cost to, to install an, another system, closed system, it was like 25 million euros without counting all the applications, you know. Um, it's just, just the base system. So as you can see, what we, what we saved in licenses, we spent it on hardware. Yeah. Well, people, that, that's, that's the, one of the best part because uh, most of us actually are, are public servants, you know. So, but not, not me, for instance, but um, Linux itself, I mean, the information society project as a whole do exist uh, with uh, free software or without free software. You know what I mean? It will be the same for us to work with Linux or to work uh, with um, Fedora in a sense that um, make Linux as a distribution doesn't cost us nothing in human resources. It's only the wage of one or two person is, is almost free in the sense of making it. You know. And this is the cost of the network. This only involves the cost of the network and the, and the hardware, not the people. The people, we are, we are counting the people in the cost of maintainership which is the next slide, you know, which cost the average, for example, the maintenance cost of the software per year of the entire educational system and each computer maintenance updates and all the software, 1.8 cents of euro per year per computer. This includes the salary of the system administrator of the school, because every school has a sysadmin, and that's it. Uh, get the facts is not much more than this, really. Yeah, yeah. Actually, right now, no, because uh, the hardware is under warranty. We have a five-year. Eventually. Eventually, yeah, yeah. This includes yes. It's very, very common for students to. Th when we started, we used to use a uh, mouse with a uh, ball, and you know the children used to throw the ball to each other. <laughs> uh, or we, every, we have a, a cabinet under the, the, the table which has a key. And one day and we found uh, some, some teenager selling the key at one euro in the <laughs> so to the others and stuff like that. It's like a black market inside the school. <laughs> so they, this includes things like that. Or, or no, the, the, most, the, the thing I love the most is when they play Scrabble, Scrabble with the keyword. The, for example, some, they just take off the keys and <laughs> make phrases. So it's not a QWERTY keyword, it's a no, fuck off keyword, <laughs> depending on the, the kind of phrase they, they form. <laughs> so you tend to see all kind of things when you put 90,000 90, computers to children. Yeah. So this is the cost of keeping that uh, control. This is almost free, actually. So, questions? Yes? Can you give more specifics about technical details? Like the live CD, uh, terminal services, something like this? So, I...
Can you give more specifics about the technical side? Like, is it like a, a live CD? No, no, no. What? Terminal services, or it's a plain okay. installation of every computer? Okay, okay. If it's a plain installation, how can you manage 90,000 computers? Well, well, actually, well, it's, uh, it, it depends. Actually, the, the Linux for, for the public in general, it's uh, a De uh, Debian who, which can be installed. It uses the Anaconda installer, which ported um, to Debian by Progeny. Uh, it's basically a Debian, but uh, we modify some packages, uh, especially, well, the one who had uh, some questions in English and stuff like that. We added some packages. Sometimes we need to, to backport some newer versions to ours. This is a desktop-oriented distribution, so for us, perhaps MBU is more critical than other things. Uh, th that's uh, the general public in uh, Linux. And in the schools, what we do, every server in the school has an image and he and every client installs it via PXE. So if, 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 it, if it gets broken, if it breaks, and the administrator shall install it over the network. So we have, um, in every school, we have a system administrator and we have a central server. In the central server, we put the updates or everything we want to do in any network, in all the networks in a school. This, we, we call that tasks. Then the school uh, fetch the tasks from the master server, and then the client fetch the task from the school server. So theoretically, uh, we can reinstall every com any computer from the central point of the, of the network. That, that's why, how we manage it. With some, it's all shell scripting. It's nothing more like that. A huge one, but it's... <laughs> You. So another question. Okay. Run, run. <laughs> okay, you meant, I think it's really great that you are trying to get uh, old elderly people into computing also. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the possibility of uh, them to put like old photos or perhaps information about themselves. Um, I'd like to know, uh, have you had any experiences like with uh, uh, getting, like getting, how do, how do you teach them how to put the data onto the internet and um, what type of system would you use to uh, do this? Well, uh, actually the, that project, the, those centers, this, this was the first project. And that project started uh, six years ago in the beginning, they were using uh, closed software. Then they switched to free software. But the system is the same. It's um, going to a town and try to identify communities. And then identify what the community do and what, uh, how, how you can, it's almost uh, creatively. I can give you another example. Um, Extremadura, for instance, have has um, one million people living outside Extremadura. They used to emigrate a lot. Uh, there are several people who never saw a, a cow scene and stuff like that. So for tho to those people, you can to organize um, video conference meetings. And well, after they see each other face or meet some relatives for the first time, and they they always want to keep in touch, and well, afterwards you do, you teach them to set up an email account. I mean, you you force them, you, you create them the need to for the technology, uh, like the bingo, the old mail, or the the old the old pictures for the old man. The housewife, for instance, like to share recipes a lot, like in software, but for cuisine and. You, you make meetings, but perhaps the first meetings are not technical, it's just to make them meet each other. And once you define the necessity of the community, you translate the community to a technological level. It's, that's, in that way, it makes it it's easier to make the translation. You, okay, so the, first, the most important thing, I guess, is that 
the most important thing is that the first contact is really face to face. Yeah, actually, then... it's it's like uh, the first month, and without touching the computers, just trying to identify the needs, mm -hmm. and that thing is that's the, the procedure. You know. Next. Okay. Welcome. Any question? Small question. Yep. Yeah, my name is Peter Reynolds and I work at the University of Oslo. We have a bit smaller numbers than you have, but we have a few problems with the numbers we have. We have 15, 1600 computers, Unix computers we have to keep uh, updated all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always run into version skew because we are unable to upgrade all the machines at the same time because they are in production and it normally doesn't synchronize well with the time we have to upgrade them. Uh, how do you handle upgrades or version skew with well, packages on 90,000 computers? No, no, well, and it's in the same network, but as you can see, it's, uh, a, we, it's almost 180 schools. So every school also has its own network. If every school might have like 25 kilometers of wiring. It's, this, those are complicated networks, but it's a, a smaller network. And every school, there's a system administrator. So it's the sysadmin who makes the update. It usually doesn't update, it uh, reinstalls. Because since we have um, all the students' documents and stuff centralized, you know, every, with just reinstalling the, the computers, <laughs> they access to their documents too. So that's the way we use it. We, every sysadmin handles the update of the, of his school, and the school is usually installed. And the server, yeah, the server is updated, but it's an, a vanilla Debian server, so that doesn't have any any problem. Okay. Uh, uh, do you do you have an estimate of the total number of sysadmins and developers involved? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Ac actually, oh, did you already say that I missed it? But no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, well, developers. Well, three, we are three. Um, CISAD means is one per school, which is 180. That's uh, the total number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, when you talk about how you involve uh, communities of elder people, it's really a masterpiece of like user analysis, task analysis, ergonomics, find needs, I mean, find the good ones and then find a solution for them. The bingo one is great and, and, and many others you're doing, which is astonishing to me because every day I meet lots of people who just don't get these kind of things and keep doing errors like all the way. And you seem to be like show up out of the blue and do everything right. So, like, where's the where's the deal? Do you have the assistance of like some no, s like s actually, sociology university yeah. or are you smart because it's an agricultural region, so everyone is tied to practice? Well, actually, and that's that might be the key point because, and in every center, the person who is in the center and coordinating the tasks doesn't have a clue about computers or software. I mean, he, and he knows or she knows how to use them, but is not an, an informatic uh, computer science uh, advocate. So they are, most of them, sociologists, psychologists, and things like that. Anyway, if you're interested in the, in the topic, uh, that project made uh, three manuals uh, describing the methodology we used and the results and all the things during the past six years, we are doing this. So in any case, we just talk afterwards and we keep in touch to, to get those manuals, if you like to. Okay. How standard is the hardware that are, you are using? Because with 90,000 systems, and uh, well, I'm involved in the deinstaller for Debian, and I know how many problems you can get installing on different hardware. Uh, so how do you deal with that? Well, uh, actually, the network is started in '98, but the the computers in the classroom might have uh, three years old, which is when we started the technological network. So they are Pentium 4 
they are the first one perfume force, like 1.5 gigahertz. And we have seven different brands. I mean, we didn't buy the whole thing to a single supplier. We, we chose seven different brands to, well, um, one, um, some of them are local companies. So it's not all. I mean, it's Pentium 4, 1.5. It ha they have 256 megabytes of RAM. They are cool, nice machines. It runs smoothly. OK. No. But, but uh, <laughs> when you're buying lots of computers, it's most, uh, it's most likely that the supplier will bring you what you want. I mean, that's, that, that's uh, something where we are fighting with right now. I mean, uh, we and Andalusia uh, have joined in, in trying to, to follow some kind of INR certification. INR is like the ISO certification authority for Spain. So um, when one public servant wants to buy, I don't know, a webcam, it makes the, the licitation to buy it, and it asks for an INR certified webcam for Linux. So then the supplier must, it usually is not in the manufacturer of Taiwan, but the guy who sells the cameras, the, the ISV, et, some, et cetera, in Spain, who, well, who works to make uh, the camera certified. That's what we are doing right now. In the beginning, no, it was a, a, a matter of, I am buying you 30,000 computers, they must work, and if they don't work, we just don't pay for them. It's the, the thing. Yep? Do you have any special certification you install for Linux? Uh, special, well, especially in which sense? No, well, we are, well, for the small and medium companies in, in Linux Empresa, with Linux company, we made uh, the applications of accounting and, you know, point of sale, which must, which um, we, we, we had to make them work with the Spanish laws and stuff like that. In the educational system, the application, the most original application we use it's, the application we, but it's like a, a set of applications, the one that the, the teacher has in, in his computer. So he can watch what the kids are doing, uh, turn off the computers, turn them on, allow them to print, to browse the internet, and stuff like that. It's, uh, actually, that application is free. I mean, in Andalusia are using it too. It's, and it's more like it's, made in, it's been made in Gamba. It's a front end to several applications. B and C and all that thing. So yes, it, it's more like a glue code, you know. We made to try to make things easier. Nothing huge right now. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Have you had any attack? Yes. No, no. Nobody cares for us, so <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Yep. Stand up and yell. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know probably most of the people in attendance here don't follow uh, U.S. domestic politics, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to comment that it, your your numbers in terms of the size of the deployment and the overall cost is just astounding. If you were to uh, talk about this to someone in the United States and say, you know, we need to do this for the public schools in the U.S. in, in poor regions, not in rich areas. Uh, you know, they would tell you it was flat out impossible. Um, and it would be interesting to see. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I don't know the right people to put this into place, although maybe I could find out. Uh, it would be, I think it would be tremendously interesting uh, for your project to get in touch with uh, with some people in the United States and try to try to make this happen in areas. I mean, there's a significantly underserved Hispanic population in the U.S. as most, as I hope most people know, mm -hmm. uh, and it would be uh, it would be a fascinating thing to get working in the U.S. because you know the U.S. is crushed under the weight of Microsoft, mm -hmm. and 
and and people and because of that, you know, they just wouldn't believe these numbers, you know, ninety thousand deployments. Um, so uh, I just want to you know congratulate you and express my amazement. I, well, you know, you. You, you can't live in in the U.S. and not 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 just believe that. Well, you know, public schools they're never going to work. They're underfunded. They're going to stay underfunded. Well, yeah. Well, in in our case, uh, we just we just don't want to public the numbers. We also and have to policy numbers because these these are all uh, European funded projects. Mm -hmm. You know, actually last year this project um, received the award of the project which um, which best spent the, the the public funds. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the, the weird thing because in 2004 the the European Parliament and gives a prize to a region who uses free software, and the next year they are talking about software patents. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, yeah. it's not very uh, coherent, you know. Yeah. But in, in, in the U.S., it would have to be a mun municipal initiative because anything larger would, would be politically infeasible. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, the United States has the money to do this kind of thing. Yeah. It just has, the federal government has very different spending priorities, like, you know, 50% or more of all the world's defense spending. But I probably shouldn't go off on a political rant. <laughs> but again, it's just that th this is great work. And I'm sure you've heard it from lots of people, but I wanted to add that. That's, this is I impressive. And uh, you guys deserve a lot of credit for making this a reality. You. Well, we, we can talk later if you want. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And the last thing, um, please, if whoever wants, we are making the an international conference. Actually, this is a conference when we are making with Andalusia. We have one date in Malaga, in the southern Spain, and the other date in Merida, 25 and 26 October. And call, for, call for papers open, so just go to that address, and whoever wants to come and see the thing. It's cheap, it's nice weather, Good ham. So it's going to be fun. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to take a 10 minute break now since it's been a long talk and continue afterwards. The region of India, actually. I, I, I can get you more detailed information. 